بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم So he was walking with the help of a cane. And he came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, Prophet of Allah, I have committed, I have committed so many so sins. Many sins. So much so that if my sins were to be distributed amongst mankind, it would destroy them. I have never left any sin, whether minor or major, but I have committed. If I were to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, would Allah accept me? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked at the man and he said, Do you bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship but Allah? And the man said, Yes. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Do you bear witness that I am the messenger of Allah? And the man said, Yes. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah will replace your record of bad deeds with a record of good deeds. The man said, Wa ghadarati, wa fajarati. I have committed so many treacheries. I have betrayed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I have committed so many major sins. And the Prophet sallam said, Allah will forgive your sins. And the man turned away while saying, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala divided people in the Quran into two types. There's no third. If you read, in Surah Al-Hujurat, Surah number 49, Ayah number 11, Allah ends the ayah by saying, And those who do not turn back to Allah and repent and ask Him for forgiveness, they are Dhalimun. And Dhalimun is the plural of Dhalim. And Dhul, the stem of the word, means oppression and injustice. What's the meaning of Tawbah? Tawbah in the Arabic language means Aada. When I say someone taba, it means he went back. That's linguistically speaking. But technically speaking, taba means to go back to Allah and admit your sins and ask Him for forgiveness. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us in the Quran that subhanAllah, sometimes when you feel doomed, when you feel desperate, and all the doors are closed, even you knock on the doors of your parents, they're going to say, go back where you were. Your brothers, your sisters, there is one door that's open 24-7. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Dariyat, Surah number 51, if there is no resort, if there is no door open, the door of Allah is open 24-7. Go back to Him. He will welcome you anytime. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us in the ayah that I shared previously in Surah Al-Hujurat, Surah number 49, and number 11, He said, وَمَنْ لَمْ يَتُبْ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ You have the choice to go back to Allah at any time, but if you don't do this, you are oppressing none but yourself. Because Allah, Allah who is a samad, and a samad in the Arabic language means He's the one to whom all the creation resort at times of need, and he needs none of his creation. So he's waiting for you to go back to him, even though he doesn't need you. But he is Ar-Rahman, the exceedingly merciful, the unimaginably merciful, the incredibly merciful, the immediately merciful. Once you go back to him, he'll forgive all of your sins. That's the meaning of Tawbah, to go back to Allah, Acknowledge your sins and he would accept you. So now we answer the second question. Who should make tawbah? Everyone, even the believers. It has to be tawbah to Allah. It has to be sincere so that you get the fruit of tawbah, which is success in this life and the life to come. Third question, out of which should I make tawbah? The scholar said two types of sins. Minor sins, sagair, and major sins, kabair. And the good news is, in the hadith narrated by Abu Hurairah in both Bukhari and Muslim, he said the Prophet وسلم, said, As salatu ila salah, whatever minor sins you commit between one salah and the other, Allah will forgive them. Wal jum'a ila al jum'a, whatever minor sins you commit between one jum'a and the other, Allah will forgive them. 
ورمضان إلى رمضان كفارة لما بينهم ما لم تخشى الكبائر. Well, ever since that are minor that you commit between one Ramadan and the other Ramadan, Allah will forgive them as long as you stay away from major sins. The second type of sins are the major sins. And you can simply know them when you read the Quran, when you read the Hadith, and you find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always threatening that there is a punishment or Allah will be angry. These are major sins. There are many of them that we take lightly and we think that they are minor sins. Many of them we commit on a daily basis. I'll give you two, for example. Backbiting, slandering. When we have free time, that's what we do. People will step out of the masjid after a powerful khutbah and they're going to be talking about someone. Look at this brother. Look what he's doing. Look at the way he's dressed. Akhi, why don't you talk to him? Why do you talk about him? Talk to him. If you're sincere about your advice, talk to him. Don't talk about him. That's a major sin. Lying. We lie every day. And sometimes we give it colors. We say, it's a white lie. So be careful. Go and study what are the minor sins, what are the major sins. I can't cover them in this khutbah. And beware. You might be committing major sins without knowing. What are the conditions that I have to fulfill to make sure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept my tawbah if I committed major sins too? You have to stop the sin. You know what's between you and Allah. I know what's between me and Allah. Quit that sin that you keep doing. Stop that sin. And when you stop that sin, stop it only to please Allah. Condition number two, anadam, regret, remorse, that sense of guilt. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi said in Muslim Imam Ahmad, anadam tawbah. Regret in itself is repentance. Why? Brothers and sisters, when you raise your hand to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say astaghfirullah, some people do it as lip service. They don't even understand what they are saying. It's just like astaghfirullah. But when you mean it, when you feel it, you know how Allah react to this? Let me first share with you one ayah in Surah Ali Imran about al muttaqin and how they make tawbah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described al muttaqin and those when they commit a sin a major sin and they transgress against themselves when they wrong themselves they remember Allah then they ask Allah for forgiveness who else other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive your sins no one and that's the next condition they do not insist on committing the same sin again and again and again because this is nothing but disrespect to Allah even if it's a minor sin, it's raised up in the sight of Allah. It becomes a major sin because you're showing no respect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you say astaghfirullah, do you know what happens? If you mean it, if you feel it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks to the angels. He says, abdi anna lahu rabban My slave knows that he has a Lord or she has a Lord will hold him or her accountable for their sins and they are asking me for forgiveness bear witness my angels I have forgiven him or her on the spot the Prophet ﷺ gave us the good news also saying when you make tawbah when you ask Allah for forgiveness after admitting your sins as if you are a newborn with a new slit so moving to the third condition it is you have to have a strong resolve and determination that you're not going to go back and commit the same sin again. And Allahu Akbar, if you go back and commit the same sin again and do tawbah, Allah will accept you. And Allah will not bring the back record, subhanAllah. Look at the patience of Allah, subhanAllah. Look at the bounty of Allah, subhanAllah. All what you need to do, do it now. Moving to the last condition, which is relating to the human beings. It's called Radd al-Madalim was to meaning restitution of rights and seeking people's forgiveness because Allah will forgive when it comes to, to his rights, but Allah will never forgive when it comes to the rights of people. People have to forgive. If you have taken anything from anyone, give it back in this life because if they don't forgive you in the Akhirah, they will take your good deeds. And even if you are about to enter Jannah, you'll be taken back and go to Hufa. And rights are two types. It's something tangible, something concrete that you can touch and see. 
and something abstract. So if it's money, if it's land, anything, give it back. If you backbited someone, if you slandered someone, go and ask them to forgive you. And if these people are not here anymore and you can't give them the rights back, do lots of istighfar, do lots of nawafil, and give sadaqah, that's what the scholar said, give charity in their name. The last thing that I wanted to mention is, what type of tawbah does Allah expect from us? I wouldn't say Allah wants or needs, Allah is in no need of us. But what type of tawbah does Allah expect from us? And the answer comes from the Quran, in Surah Al-Tahreem, Surah number 66, Ayah number 8. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling upon you and I want you to listen carefully. Because when Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, He's calling you. You should feel so special. Allah cares about you. As you choose to believe, Allah is giving you the honor. He's calling you. And this ayah says, Oh, you who believe, go back to Allah. Admit your sins. Ask Him for forgiveness. What type of tawbah, oh Allah, do you expect from us? He said, Tawbatan nasuha. In Arabic, when we say, Nasahtu al asal, Ida naqaytuhu min jami' al shawaib. So Allah said, Tawbat al nasuha. When you say, I purify honey, it means you purify honey from any residue, from any waste. It becomes very pure. As if Allah is saying, purify your intention when you make tawbah. It's only for me. It's only to please Allah. No one, nothing else should be in your intention when you turn back to Allah in repentance. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, on the day of judgment, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will bring each and every one of us in front of Him, individually. And He will cover you so that you will not be embarrassed in front of people. And He will remind you, my slave, do you remember that sin that day? And he will say, yes, Allah. And he will keep reminding you, do you remember that sin that day? Do you remember that sin that day? Do you remember that sin that day? And he'll keep saying, yes, 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 Allah, until you feel you're doomed. You're going to hellfire. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to say, I have never embarrassed you in the dunya, and today I will forgive you. Allah Akbar. If this is what Allah is preparing for us on the day of judgment, what have we prepared for that meeting with Allah? Allah is willing to forgive all of your sins. Are you willing to admit your sins between yourself and Allah today? And ask Him, ask Him.